there's a mountain outside of Clarion, Pennsylvania. It has a natural spring that comes out of the side, and the water flows freely. Many people stop along the roadside to collect it, to drink it, to enjoy it. When I was young, my family often had family reunions there. We would always stop and collect the water. I took that water for granted. Didn't realize how special it was. See, the rocks of the mountain naturally filter this water. And along the way, it picks up minerals that enhance its flavor. It's better than anything we could ever get out of a tap. So when I decided that it was time for me to start making mead, I knew exactly where I would get my water from. Because after all, every good mead starts with good water. So I knew I would make the hour and a half drive from where I live to go and collect this water in order to make it into a delicious home brew. Now having good water isn't enough, because if you truly want a delicious mead, you also need delicious honey. And that's where I come in. As a beekeeper, I have full control over the honey that my hives produce. I know what they're eating, I know when they're bringing in the pollen, I know what chemicals I can use in the hive, or in this case not use. I'm very careful with what I do with my beehives. I ensure that they are happy and healthy, because happy and healthy bees always produce the best honey. My honey is always raw, it is always unfiltered, and that makes it taste better than anything you can get from the store. The recipe for this mead is a traditional one from the Beekeeper's Bible. It calls for, oh, well, the recipe calls for lemon peel, but here I used orange because I thought the flavor profile would be better. I also used two cinnamon sticks, five whole cloves, 
and the peels of two oranges as well as the juice. I use D47 champagne yeast as well, as that creates a, a, a fantastic product. So to start, you want to pour your gallon of honey into the water. Now it's very important here that you don't want to bring this water to a boil. If you boil your water, you're going to hurt the flavor of the final product because boiling it removes many of the nutrients from the honey. It alters the final flavor and it alters the final aroma. So you want to bring it up to about 190 degrees. And once you do that, you can then go ahead and put in your orange juice uh, at the beginning here. That way the flavors can come out. At some point the meat is going to start to put off a foam at the top. You want to make sure that you collect this foam and take it away. Uh, that way it will improve the clarity of the final product. Once you've finished bringing it up to temperature, you then want to add in your orange peel, your cloves, and your cinnamon. And I let that come together for about between 45 minutes and an hour. And I left those in there as it cooled overnight. That way the flavors would infuse themselves into the final product. The next morning I came back and took out my flavors there, my orange peels and my cinnamon sticks and my cloves. And then it came time to move the mead from the cooking pot into the brewing vessel.
I use D47 champagne yeast and you want to put that into lukewarm water and let it activate for about five minutes until it, it becomes, it starts to bloom. You can actually see it bloom. You then add that in to your vessel and then you give it a nice little bit of agitation. You then put on an air trap, so that way no oxygen can get in as this is an anaerobic process. And you store it in a nice dark room for a month. Twice a day during the, the, the first fermentation, you want to agitate your mead. Now if you're doing this at home, it's as simple as just swirling it around like this, and you'll see the bubbles pop up from it releasing carbon dioxide. After your first fermentation period, and that can vary by the person, I chose to go about a month and a week. You don't want to go more than two months. If you leave the sediment from the yeast in there, it can start to ruin the flavor. And that happens after about two and a half months. So you can stretch your primary fermentation out to two months, but you generally don't want to I leave it about a month because I look at the air bubbles if it wasn't putting out air bubbles every minute. And at that point it was basically done with the primary fermentation. You want to make sure that you've disinfected everything. You can see here that I have my secondary fermenters and you want to have as little headspace as possible. So I put my mead into a much smaller vessel, several much smaller vessels that way I can control the headspace that's in there. Now you want to make sure that you've disinfected them, and I did that with a no-rinse disinfectant that you can purchase pretty cheaply. And I ran that through my siphon, that way the inside of the siphon is also disinfected. I'm very, very careful about not introducing new pathogens into the mead. And so you take your siphon and make sure that the primary fermenter is above where you're putting it. And you stick your siphon in there, not down into the sediment. You do not want to suck the sediment up have it just above that sediment that way you can pull your product from the primary fermenter into the second fermenter, secondary fermenter.
at the bottom you're always going to have a little bit of sediment and you don't want to include that in the secondary fermentation because it can throw off the flavor it's not going to hurt you uh, you can drink it yourself actually i poured it out of there and put it into a cup and drank a little bit myself after making sure the sediment was gone but uh, you, you don't want to hold on to that in your fermentation. I let, a sec I let it age in the secondary fermentation. That's all you're doing is aging it because you're not really producing much more alcohol at that point. A little bit, but not too much. I let it go for about another month and another week at that point. And from there, you have enough of the air out of it. You have enough of the carbon dioxide out of it that you can go ahead and do the final bottling. So here you can see me pulling out of the secondary fermentation. You're still going to have a little bit of sediment. But you then put it into uh, a somewhere where you can use it to bottle like I'm doing here. And uh, it doesn't look on here like the clarity is that great, but I assure you um, the final product ended up being very clear. And that happens just from settling, letting it sit for a while, and it's going to settle out over time. Okay, everybody, time for the moment of truth. As you can see, I'm in my evening robe here, getting ready to enjoy a nice little bit of mead here. Bottled it in today. This is uh, what was left over at the bottom, so there's going to be a little bit of uh, sediment in this, whereas what's in the bottle, uh, what I bottled, is going to be fairly clear. But I thought I'd uh, treat you to a little bit of a taste test here, sort of describe what the flavors are and get to find out how the mead came out. So, without further ado, I'm first going to try and sniffing it. It has a nice sweet flavor, or a nice sweet smell to it. You can smell the honey for sure. A um, little bit of a floral note, that probably comes from the honey, because it, it does have a very floral flavor to it. Um... Mm. You can definitely tell that it's been spiced as well. You're, you're definitely picking that up. Now, this is going to be a little bit sweet because I haven't aged it. Uh, it's only been aged about a month. So it's going to be a little bit sweet right now. You can age mead really as long as you want, um, with the best meads being aged a year, two years, somewhere in there. You, you, It's kind of however long you want to decide to age it. But I wouldn't be able to make a video if I didn't age it. So here we go. One month aged meat. I brewed it in October, bottled it here December 9th. Hmm. Wow. It is very sweet. Um, you know, most meads are very dry. Um, th this is a little bit dry. It, it's, 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 not, it's sweet, but it's not overpowering. You definitely get the notes of the orange peel, the cinnamon. You, you definitely, definitely get those notes. It tastes a little bit like, uh, you know, like a spiced apple cider almost. It's Huh. Yeah. Yeah, it almost tastes like a little bit like, and it's because of the spicing, you know, with the cloves, orange peel, and cinnamon. Um, you know, those are the same elements that you use to spice a good apple cider. So that definitely comes through in the finished product here for sure. Um, you know, the, and with this having such a high honey content, you know, it's a, a quarter of it is honey. So it, it does come through with a nice sweetness. And you can really tell, you know, that, that high quality water, um, the high quality honey, it really shows through. This is you know, this really came out well. I'm very, very pleased with it. So I can't wait to rack it up um, and uh, let it age. I mean, I, I got about uh, 24 bottles out of this. Uh, they're 16 ounce bottles, given a few to friends and family, of course. There are some benefits to knowing the bee man. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to see how this is going to taste. I may, uh, I'm going to have some for a Christmas dinner this year and maybe save a couple bottles and have it for Christmas dinner next year, and we'll see how well that turns out. So thank you for taking this journey with me. It's certainly been interesting um, on my, my first time really making me. I've made wine before, I've made beer before, uh, but this is really this has been my first time actually making mead, and so, you know, I, I, I wanted to approach it the same way that I make, make wine when I do that. Um, 
and uh, I really am pleased with how that product turned out. So thank you for following along with me. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you.